Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Good morning, I'm Carl Fitzpatrick and welcome to Business Matters. Coming up on this morning's show, why the lotto's gamble on privatisation has paid off, the pilot programme which has successfully facilitated trade between Wexford and Savannah, and a former RTE broadcaster whose new business aims to bring customised news feeds to your phone. Well, this week, we heard about the long overdue Brexit agreement, a deal which has seen the UK cabinet crumble. One in five employers are considering moving out of Dublin due to spiralling costs. And Rossler Europort announced a 15 million euro upgrade of its facility. I've invited Glenn Carr, the manager of Rossler Europort, to join me on Business Matters to discuss these plans in the coming weeks, and he has kindly accepted this invitation. So that's sure to make an interesting interview. Now let's get straight down to business. Premier Lotteries Ireland became the first private operator of the National Lottery, but as privatising this national institution paid off. The chief executive of the National Lottery, Dermot Griffin, joins me now to tell us the answer. Dermot, we'll be discussing the recent results announced by the National Lottery shortly. But first, back in 2014, Premier Lotteries Ireland was awarded a 20-year licence to operate the lotto in Ireland. But perhaps you can tell us about the scale of the company behind the National Lottery. The consortium that we were part of and won the licence to operate the National Lottery was a consortium headed up by Ontario Teacher Pension Plan. Um, They're one of the largest pension plans in Canada. Uh, so they hold 80% of um, the, the share ownership. And we also have uh, 20%, which is owned by Unpust and Unpust Pension Schemes. And what was the reason for it to move away from state ownership at the time? The, uh, at the time, the idea of um, the licence process was to um, raise additional funds for good causes. You might remember at the time, uh, the economy was in a, a downturn. And in particular, the state needed to try and raise uh, funds, and in particular, uh, with a view to building the new children's hospital. So half of the upfront uh, payment that was um, acquired uh, by selling the licence has been um, utilised to to build the new children's hospital that's that's currently under, under construction. And from your experience, how challenging was the privatisation process? Um, the, the changeover requires uh, quite a lot of planning. Um, the, the condition of the license was that we had new equipment uh, in situ at the start of a new license process. So what it meant was we had to continue to operate the uh, old infrastructure right up to the night of transition to the new license while um, building out uh, and rolling out the new technology and then switching over seamlessly so that uh, there wasn't any particular issue with draws or, um, you know, that draws could continue um, each day and that we could continue selling tickets uh, each day. So it it was a huge undertaking and and one that most businesses would never have to face. Now, since Premier Lotteries Ireland took over the running of the lotto, some of the games have witnessed price increases. What impact did that have on the number of people playing? The price changes, some of them in in many ways, were overdue in the sense that, say, uh, the price change we made to uh, Lotto Plus, you know, that we, the last time we changed the price in that game was 2002. Mm. Um, you know, uh, on Lotto, uh, we hadn't changed that game since 2006. Uh, and actually, the license process meant that we were in a period of time from, say, uh, 2012 up to 2015, where, you know, we we're working on transition rather than um, changing the games or updating the games. Uh, so while there was a number of price increases since we changed uh, the, the new structure, part of them are catching up. Um, and when you look at the level of prizes we're offering now, um, you know, everything has moved up in proportion. Uh, lotteries, uh, I suppose, grow and, and uh, thrive on, on the fact that they remain exciting and that means more prizes by and large and bigger prizes uh, uh, and that's always been the s- secret of, of, of success in the lottery business. Uh, and, and that's what we've tried to do over the last, last number of, of years. Uh, you know, we haven't, uh, we, no one likes increasing the price. Uh, but when we increase um, the price of a ticket, 
proportionally the amount of money that goes into prizes goes up in the exact same proportion. Likewise, the amount of money that goes to good causes, and that's typically about 30% of the revenue that we take in, that also goes up in proportion to uh, the increase in the price. Now, at the beginning of this month, Premier Lotteries Ireland announced strong results for 2018. Perhaps you can remind us about some of those headline figures. Yeah, so, um, you know, our our, uh, turnover for 2017 was 800 million. That was up from 750 million in in 2016. Uh, But, you know, last year was a really good year for our players. The, The amount of money that we paid out in prizes uh, on our own games was 452 million, and also um, we had three winners of the Irish Euro Minions uh, jackpot, uh, and that came to 156 million. So you know a huge amount of money paid up and uh, paid out in prizes in 2017. You know we created uh, 20 new millionaires during the year, um, and we had 12 Lotto jackpot winners uh, in in the course of 2017. Uh, and uh, typically we had uh, in 2017 1.4 million people, Irish people, playing uh, the National Lottery Games on a, on a regular basis. So it is really the national game and, and continues to be the national game. Uh, but what we're particularly delighted about was in, in uh, 2017 we generated 226 million for good causes. Uh, and that's a huge amount of money uh, that goes back into all different aspects of Irish life. And how instrumental has the online channel been in generating such strong sales figures? Yeah, it certainly uh, helped our overall growth in in sales numbers. So last year, uh, our sales online were 52.1 million. So, uh, you know, that's an additional 52 million in in sales through the online channel. Um, You know, what's particularly pleasing about the online channel is there are a lot of players that use the convenience of having an online account but they also continue to play in shops as well so if they're in the shop at the weekend uh, they'll buy their tickets uh, from the local retailer in store but um, if it's a I don't know a wet and windy uh, Wednesday evening uh, and they, they can't get out to a shop the, the, the convenience of using their online account or their app is uh, very handy. The National Lottery has always been associated with generating millions for good causes, but typically what types of causes and projects receive funding from the National Lottery? Yeah, so, I mean, it's uh, it's right across the board. You know, uh, sports naturally, uh, you know, is a big recipient of um, National Lottery funds. So, you know, clubhouses, floodlight pitches, um, uh, all-weather pitches um, and, and facilities, um, are, are, are you know get a, a quite a bit of funding from the national lottery, and they're probably the more obvious things that people recognise day in day out. But there's you know a host of other um, uh, uh, charities and, and community services that also receive funding that mightn't be so obvious. And um, you know uh, we, we've had a, um, a, a good cause awards uh, competition this year. Uh, that highlighted, um, you know, the various different uh, groups that receive funding from the National Lottery, and they can be in the areas of heritage, uh, arts and culture, Irish language, um, health and welfare, youth. Um, so we, you know, we've we've got a, a an array of of different uh, different types of char- uh, charities and community services that receive um, re- receive funding from, from the National Lottery. Now, you recently hosted the Good Causes Awards. Tell us about this night and some of the causes which were honoured during the ceremony. Yeah, so um, we had uh, an awards uh, ceremony and, and uh, we what, what uh, the way the awards uh, were structured was uh, we invited applications uh, from... Um, community uh, f- uh, funding activity that uh, had received national lottery funding uh, on a county basis as, uh, and, and then uh, we had county uh, winners in, in a number of different categories including sport and uh, youth and, and welfare um, heritage uh, and, and they went on to regional final, finals uh, and then uh, we had on the uh, 3rd of November we had the uh, grand final where we selected um, the overall winner uh, of the National Lottery 
good cause of the year uh, 2017. Um, uh, and we, it, within uh, the, the awards ceremony, we had winners in each of the categories. So again, youth and, and well well being, heritage, Irish language. They they all there was a winner in in each of those categories. Um, uh, and and we were delighted that there was one of one of those winners um, was the, um, the the Waterford Healing Arts Centre, um, who won the health and well being category. And for for winning that category, they they collected uh, ten thousand uh, euros. Um, so you know, you know, for us, it was a great opportunity to showcase um, these, the, the, you know, the the the, um, the the work that was done by these uh, community um, um, groups right throughout the country. And how do you view the challenge which Uber style players such as Lotto Land and Jackpot dot com pose to the national lottery? Yeah, it's it's something we've been highlighting to uh, to government and to uh, the uh, politicians because we feel that uh, allowing um, organisations to come in uh, online, offshore, remote uh, operators to come in and to try and basically copycat the type of draws that we have uh, and and sell to uh, players that would normally play, say, national lottery. Uh, is is uh, is isn't right. Uh, you know they, they they don't operate within the country. They operate remotely, and the money they generate is uh, isn't going to good causes in Ireland. Uh, it's it's going to they play against the player as opposed to the way the national lottery works. Is everyone participates and someone wins the pot of money, uh, whereas they're in effect taking bets on the, on the outcome of lottery games and and either the player wins or they win. Uh, but there isn't any money going to, to the good causes. So there isn't any uh, amount like the amount we generate going to the good causes. And anything that takes from our games um, will impact on, on the amount of money that's raised for good causes uh, and ne- negatively impact on that. And in terms of future game enhancements, how do you balance new game innovations and price increases against the possibility of potentially driving customers away? Well, uh, you know, all the games that we um, offer and, and the new game enhancements, uh, one of the things we, we do is we put uh, any potential changes through kind of rigorous testing and controls. We look at uh, how the various different games play, played out in other market, markets. Uh, but we also uh, do quite a lot of uh, research with our players uh, and potential players uh, and, and normally we wouldn't just put one scenario in terms of a change to our to our focus group players. We'd normally look at options and range of different options. Options, uh, and then we would look at the features that they like and don't like, and uh, the trade-offs between uh, you know you know the prize money and and what they would have to pay for a ticket is is always a. Uh, one that we'd be very conscious of making sure that it, you know, the players like it and I mean no one likes the price going up but when you offer them an exciting game with exciting prizes versus the the, the price of the ticket uh, it is something that you, you get strong feedback from players uh, and you would normally refine your proposition a number of times before finalising it so you're pretty sure when, um, when, when, when the game is on offer that the players, when they when they understand all the the, the benefits of the game, um, you know, will will opt for that game, um, and it's something we've done uh, for many years now, and it's it's proved to be uh, very successful. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Dermot Griffin from the National Lottery, and I would like to thank Dermot for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us on this morning show. After the break, we'll be joined by Alison Stone Thompson from Tradebridge, who'll be discussing the burgeoning commercial relationships between Wexford and Savannah companies. So stay tuned for that. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.